The topic of lesson six will be on uh, analyzing beams as a subject that we study in uh, strength of materials or mechanics of materials. And uh, today I'm going to analyze three different loading conditions on a beam. So the beam I'm going to define is going to be divided into um, three sections. The each section is an element and all the, ele all the elements are going to be the same. So I have four nodes. So I'm going to number them one, two, three, and four. And definitely I have three elements, one, two, and three. Um, the first case that I want to study in here is the first of all, I'm going to say that I'm going to fix this end at node one. And for the first case, I'm going to apply an F or a load of, let's say, thousand newtons uh, downwards. And if my coordinates are like this, x and y, so this is going to be a minus thousand newtons in uh, y direction for the load. And for the second, mo oh, so this is my first case of study. The second case is going to be this beam that if I'm applying the same uh, or if I'm dividing it correctly. The second case is going to be something like this. I'm going to apply a uniform pressure in the middle section of let's say again thousand newton meters or newton millimeters here. So this is my um, case number two. And in case number three I'm going to keep the constant or the uniform pressure of thousand newton millimeters in here and apply an extra pressure of non-uniform but uh, changing in a slope um, uh, from thousand to two thousand newton meters and see the deformation and the results of my uh, beam based on th these three different types of loading conditions. So I have uh, three different loading conditions. What you will learn in this lesson is how to modify your loading per analysis in, uh, without needing to redefine your model, s reselect your elements, and re reapply the cross-section areas or constant, real constant, and materials. All you want to do probably is just uh, uh, change your loading condition. So you, you will learn how to do this in this example. Plus, the other thing I want to uh, teach is how to read um, no, nodal results. So let's say we're, we're asked to find deformation in Y direction plus rotation um, with, respect to, with respect to Z axis. For for elements or locations on this beam um, of hundred, let's say hundred millimeters apart. I'm gonna give this uh, these spaces of hundred uh, units or millimeters. So let's say we're asked to read UY, which is displacement in Y direction, and rotation of each of these uh, points. Point one, two, and uh, three, or nodes 2, 3, and 4. That's why I have, I'm uh, planning to divide my beam into three sections with four nodes. And um, again the material I'm going to define, I'm going to use for um, this analysis is steel with elasticity of 200 gigapascals and Poisson's ratio of 0.3 and the element that I'm going to pick in order to do this analysis is going to be beam 3 with cross-section area um, of uh, 12 times 12 so basically it's going to be square of 12 units by 12 units which means my um, area moment of inertia is going to be 12 to the 3 as we had uh, measured or calculated this uh, similar thing in lesson 1. 
So with this, uh, we can go to ANSYS and do the analysis. Okay, we're in ANSYS now, and uh, we can uh, start the calculation or analysis. The first thing I'm going to do is to go to Preferences and click Structural, and then come to Preprocessor. As always, define my element first. I'm going to pick element 3 or element beam 3 with um, the default options that are def uh, defined by ANSYS. I'm going to stick to the defaults. Come to real constants and add a real constant for my beam 3 of area 12 times 12. IZZ of 12, 12 times uh, 144 and the height of 12, which means the cross-section area is going to be 12 by 12, which is 144, and the height is 12, which means the width of my uh, cross-section area is, gonna, is also going to be 12, which gives me square um, cross-section area. Click OK, close this window, go to Materials, and again, Material Models, Structural, Linear, Elastic, Isotropic. The elasticity is 200 gigapascals and um, Poisson's ratio is 0 0.3. Let's go to modeling and create nodes as I had explained before. Explained before, the first node is going to be located as uh, at x0, y0, apply, and then the second node is at x of 100. The third one at at x of 200. And finally, I have a node at x of 300. Click OK. So all my nodes are made. And I can go to Elements, Auto Numbered, through, through Nodes. Pick the first and second node. Second, oh, I should have clicked Apply. Second and third, Apply. Third and fourth, OK. So my model is ready now. And because I used nodes and elements to create this model, I can escape meshing and uh, jump to loads. Again, I can come here and make sure that I'm doing static analysis. Go to define loads, apply, structural, displacement. On nodes, so I click node or pick node 1, click OK, and make sure that all the OFs or degrees of freedom are 0. Now I have to come to force moments because the first case that we're going to study here is um, a, a focused or a concentrated load on node 4. So I pick on nodes, pick node 4, click OK, and FY of minus 1000. Click OK. My model is ready, so I can go into solution, solve current LS, OK, and my solution is done. I can go to general post-process and the first thing I want to see is the deformation of my beam on, under this loading condition. So this is how my beam deforms under this loading condition. Counterplot, nodal solution, DOF, um, displacement in Y direction, click OK, and as you see uh, the displacement in uh, Y direction for each based on nodal calculation is uh, shown to me and based on the conditions that we defined in node 1 there is no displacement in Y direction but basically it doesn't give me exact uh, uh, solution so I don't need I don't know the results in or the displacement in node 2 or node 3 or even in node 4 I'm not very precise so I can come to list results Nodal solution, degrees of freedom solution, Y component, component of displacement, click OK. Now I see displacement for each of the nodes that I, that I wanted to. So at node 1 there is no displacement in Y direction, but at node 2 I have uh, a displacement of um, minus 0.3858 times 10 to the minus 5, which is very small. Um, but as we go further, in node 4 I have the greatest displacement in y direction. I can do the same thing in nodal solutions 
and instead of reading displacement and y direction I come to rotation vector sum click OK so the rotation or uh, the angle of rotation is given to me which is again very small and the other thing I want to read is um, reaction solution let's see I want to read, read all the reactions the only node that, we, that has reaction in here is node 1 because that's the only one which has constraint or a fixed end there is an um, reaction there is a reaction in y direction of thousand equal to the load that we applied uh, on node 4 and a uh, moment of 0.3 times 10 to the 6 if you remember the length of this uh, beam is 300 and we applied a load of thousand in here 300 times times thousand makes um, 3 times 10 to the 5 which is equal to this 0.3 times 10 to the 6 now let's say we want to jump to case number 2 how do we do it we, so basically we have to redefine our loading condition what I want to do is I, I come to solution go to define loads and the first thing I want to do is to delete the load that I've applied on this node so I come to delete structural force on nodes and pick this node that I defined earlier click OK and I can either pick all or FY because I know that I only applied an FY in this one but I pick all just to make sure every loading at that uh, node is deleted and I can com come to apply come to pressure and one thing you have to remember that in order to apply pressure on a beam you don't go to pressure on elements instead you come to pressure on beams because this that we have defined is a beam so I come to here click on beams and I pick the middle element click OK and I pick minus or thousand the reason I'm picking thousand is that this is pressure so when you pick plus or when you give a plus value for pressure it goes it goes toward the element but if I pick minus thousand it will go upward so uh, opposite to the direction of the uh, element so I pick thousand and because I'm applying a constant and uniform uh, pressure on this middle element I can leave this val value J blank as it says leave blank for uniform pressure so I can click OK and as you see I have a constant pressure applied to the middle element so again my case 2 loading condition is uh, uh, ready I can click current LS and find the solution come here and again let's see how my element is being deformed shape is the same thing nodal calculation come to um, again displacement in y direction we can read the results in here but again let's go to list results nodal solution and read the displacements in um, y direction which seems that the results are a little bit bigger than we got in the previous example the previous case we can read the same results for um, rotation and again the rotation values are a little bit bigger than before because the load that we've applied is a little bit uh, different so let's go to reaction solution and read all the reactions which are in node 1 so again we have an FY which is a little bit bigger now this one is uh, 0.1 times 10 to the 6 the length of this element here was 100 units or 100 millimeters and we applied a thousand Newton millimeters pressure on here so thousand times hundred gives 10 to the 5 um, Newton Newtons of force applied at the center of this uh, beam which is equal to this one and if we say uh, thousand times half the length that of the beam is 150 so this gives the uh, moment um, of the reaction which is applied which is uh, present at this end which is fixed
Now let's apply the third loading condition. Because I'm gonna I'm not gonna delete any other loads, instead I'm just gonna add a, another um, pressure on this third element. So I don't need to define any loads, so I come uh, directly to apply structural pressure on beams again and pick this third element, click OK. Again, the first one is 1000, but this, this time I'm not going to apply a constant or a uniform pressure, so I pick or enter 2000 in here, and so this is shown to me. My model is ready. Come to Solve, Current LS, click OK, and my solution is done. Can come to general post process again if I s want to see the def deformation, it's basically the same. So come to normal calculations, click OK for you know uh, displacement in y direction, and seems that the displacements are a little bit bigger now. But how I can find it out is to come to list results, nodal solutions, displacement in y direction. Basically, it's true that the displacement in y direction is a little bit bigger now than uh, the previous example. I can also do the same thing for rotation in y direction. I can see that as well, or actually it's rotation in z direction. And uh, the other thing I can plot is the vector plot of rotation in y direction. So basically it's a vector that that tells me in which direction my nodes are uh, moving. But let's say we have defined enough enough elements instead of three. We have let's say more than three. Let's say hundred elements defined for this beam, and we want to read uh, or we want to list results for the for some results for, or data for each element. So basically, I can come to element table and define a table. Click add, and for the first one, I'm gonna say, give me um, displacement in y direction per element. I'm gonna call it UY as it is. Click apply, and then pick rotation in z direction and call it RZ, and click OK. So I have a table of two columns for each element. I have uh, displacement in y direction and rotation in uh, about z axis for that table for each element. I can close that and come to list results. Find element table data and I can pick UY and RZ that I defined earlier and click OK. So as you know, I have only three elements, one, two, and three. And for each element, I have displacement in y direction and rotation in z direction. If I had more than three elements, let's say I had 100 elements defined for my analysis, I could get 100 results and uh, list them together and uh, save this file in, or this list in um, a text form and then load that text file in um, Excel and draw the graphs for it. So basically, uh, in this lesson you learned how to define element table. It's pretty easy and straightforward. You can just come here and add as many results as you want to this, uh, to your calculation or analysis, and then um, read the results for each element or from list results. But later, when we get more advanced uh, uh, examples, I can explain more details and here how to use add items and multiply and find maximum and stuff um, but so far you just get the idea of how you do that and the other thing I want to do here list results reaction solution all fi all items and as you see things have changed compared to the previous two examples for this model So basically this is uh, the conclusion for lesson 6 of uh, defining loads and different loads on uh, a beam.